Hi everyone, this is Vijay Lakshmi from Department of Physiology, SRM Dental College, Ramabram Campus. Today I am just going to talk about uh, the anatomical structure of neuromuscular junction and physiologically what are the sequences of events which is going to happen in the neuromuscular junction. Neuromuscular junction is defined as it is a physiological junction between the neuron and the skeletal muscle. This structure is well developed in a skeletal muscle. So, uh, to get a skeletal muscle action, we require the signal from the neuron. So, basically, this neuromuscular junction is defined as a junction between the neuron and the muscle. The neuromuscular junction is otherwise called as myoneural junction or motor end plate, through which the action potential will be propagated from the neuron to the muscle for its action. So, in this diagram, the neuron which is innervating the skeletal muscle fibers are known as a motor neuron. You can see here, when it comes near to the muscle, it is going to lose its myelin sheath and it is going to invade inside the muscle for its innervation. So, basically, we should get a signal from a neuron, from a neuron to the muscle for its action. Anatomically, the neuromuscular junction we can divide into three parts. One is presynaptic portion that is the axon terminal and synaptic cleft uh, that is the junction and postsynaptic membrane that is otherwise called in plate membrane that is the muscle membrane. So now we concentrate on a presynaptic portion that is the axon terminal. So when the axon uh, coming near to the muscle, it is going to lose its myelin sheath, it is going to be naked. There are three important parts you can see there. One is the cluster of a vesicle where the chemical is going to be stored, especially here it is a stelcholine. And second is the calcium gated channel. So in this area, the calcium plays a very very important role for excites the acetylcholine, which excites the acetylcholine. And apart from this, the cluster of um, a vesicle will be placed in a particular area which is otherwise called as an active zone. So in that particular active zone only, the vesicle will sit and it release the acetylcholine. And next is synaptical cleft. This is the gap between the terminal button and the muscle fiber which is almost about 40 to 100 nanometer wide. The important thing which is going to be present here is acetylcholine esterase. It's an enzyme. So excessive amount of acetylcholine is going to be uh, hydrolyzed here by this enzyme and it's going to be divided into acetate and choline for further synthesis of acetylcholine. So here you should note it here, the acetylcholine, is, if it is excessive, if it is excessive in that particular area, this is, enzyme is going to degrade it. Okay? Then the post synaptic portion is the muscle membrane. Here the two important things you should note, one is the receptor. So receptor is nothing but it's a biological transducer. It's going to convert one form of energy into another form of energy. So basically it is a protein particles. So this receptor specifically called acetylcholine receptor. So whatever the acetylcholine is going to be released from presynaptic area, it has to bind. The trigon bind has to happen in this receptor level for propagation of action potential from neuron to the muscle. And second is the voltage gated sodium channel. So the voltage gated sodium channel plays an important role for depolarization and repolarization which is going to happen in the muscle. And next is what is the physiological events, that is the sequences of events which is going to happen in the neuromuscular junction to excite the skeletal muscle. To get the excitation and contraction of the skeletal muscle, uh, it should get a signal from the neuron. So what is going to happen in the NMJ, we will see. First, the neuron gets the stimuli, so the action potential is going to be generated in the neuron. So that action potential is going to be travelled down till the axon terminal or otherwise specifically we call this a terminal buttons. So once it travels down, it is going to disturb the a membrane there, so which facilitate entry of a calcium from extracellular fluid to inside the neuron. 
So what is going to happen? The stored acetylcholine which is present in the vesicle is going to be dragged by this calcium uh, molecules and it will take the vesicle into active zones. And then once it sits in the active zones, the, through the exo exocytosis process, the acetylcholine is going to be released with the help of calcium. So here there are two important protein molecules which is going to play a role. One is called synaptobrevin and syntaxin. So these two are vesicular membrane protein and neural membrane protein which helps to drag the vesicle into active zone. So the vesicle has to sit into active zone for exocytosis process. So at last the acetylcholine is going to be released in the cleft area. After the exocytosis process which is going to happen in the neuron level, the acetylcholine is going to be diffused in the cleft area. So some of the acetylcholine is going to be hydrolyzed by the acetylcholine esterase enzyme and other molecules is going to be bind with the receptor which is going to be present in the muscle which is specifically called acetylcholine receptor. It's, a, it's going to act as a biological transducer. So which once the ligand happens, the changes is going to happen in the muscle area. Once the acetylcholine molecules attach with the receptor which present in the muscle, the ligand is going to uh, change the structural aspect of the receptor which disturbs the membrane of the muscle. So this action potential is going to be uh, traveled to the T-tubule of the muscle. So what's going to happen here, this facilitate the opening of voltage gated sodium channels. So voltage gated sodium channels will give a way for entry of a sodium molecules which comes from extracellular fluid to inside the muscle. So once it enters the stage we call it as depolarization of the muscle. So that thereby like action potential is going to be propagate from a neuron to the muscle for its excitation. Now let me explain the entire sequences of events which is going to happen in the neuromuscular junction. First, the arrival of action potential should happen at the axon terminal. Second, it's going to produce depolarization of the membrane of the terminal buttons. Third, the activation of opening of voltage gated calcium channels. So the calcium influx into the terminal button should happen. So next is calcium mediated exocytosis of the acetylcholine vesicle and ACH release should happen. So once it released in the cleft area, it should bind with the receptor, ACH receptor which is going to be present in the muscle. So once the ligand happen, it is going to alter the membrane stability in the muscle region which is going to produce the facility of entry of a sodium ion inside the muscle. So once it happens, spread of action potential is going to happen in the T-tubules. Now the applied physiology. Myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular junction disorder. It is considered as an autoimmune in nature. It is characterized by weakness and fragility of the skeletal muscles that gradually worsen the muscle. And it mainly affects the receptor which is present in the muscle. So our body will try to produce more amount of antibodies against this particular receptor. So acetylcholine cannot, cannot bind with the muscle. So there is no proper excitation and contraction is going to happen in the muscle which produce more weakness in the muscle. Thank you.